All right, everybody, hail and welcome back to this very, very special episode of Midgard Musings. Highly anticipated, highly advertised. Hopefully you guys have seen the things that I've been putting out over the last, you know, few weeks to a month about this video today. Finally, get a chance to share it with all of you. More details on that coming right after this. Let's go ahead and take care of some of the housekeeping stuff right off the bat. First of all, my name is Jesse and I'm the host here on this channel and if Norse heathenry or Germanic paganism, Asatru, Asatru, whatever word you want to put to it, right? If those are the sort of things that interest you, please subscribe to the channel right down here and make sure you ding the bell notification so that we don't miss anything that I put out here. All right, so like I said, guys, today's video has been one that I've been looking forward to put out here for the biggest part of the last month. Um, I finally got a chance to sit down and have a really, really cool conversation with uh, two individuals from a f uh, Norse folk band called Voluspa. I got a chance to sit down and talk to Varg Sorstod and Sol Geirstotir. You guys are watching. I hope that I pronounced it correctly again. Um, but they are in the band Voluspa, and I got a chance to sit down and talk with them today about their music and about some other neat topics. Hope you guys really enjoy this video. It's been one that I've been really excited and proud uh, to, to be able to share with everybody here. Uh, make sure that at the end of the video or you know while you're watching that you go down into the description area to see all the ways that you can support Beluspa and, and Soul and Varg individually and collectively. Um, check it all out down in the description area and don't forget to follow them on their social media platforms, subscribe to their social media sites, follow them, like them, whatever it is that those various social media things that you see down there call for definitely take action do so you don't want to miss anything that they have coming out so here it is my interview called our heathen hearts with Varg and Sol from the band Wolspa enjoy don't forget to like comment share subscribe and hail All right, everybody. Here we are today, joined with Varg Sostut. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Sol Geers Dotir. From uh, you guys may recognize these two from the band Voluspa. Did I say that right? That's yeah, right. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Okay. So um, I want you guys before we get started, uh, Varg and Sol, if you could just uh, tell us about who you are and, and what you do. In for Belus, but we're going to be talking about a few different things throughout this call, and I uh, just want to get to know who you are um, and what you do for Belus. Mm -hmm. I am multi instrumentalist and I do compose. I also do a little singing, but uh, of course, Sol is the main vocalist in the band. So uh, I recently joined the band actually last year, so I am quite new. Uh, member of the band, really, uh, and I've been playing Voluspo now for about one and a half year. So uh, hmm. yeah, that's what I do. Okay. Yeah, well, Voluspo was mainly kind of my project, I guess, um, hmm. but it was just a studio project, and we met approximately one and a half year ago. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, I sing, uh, I compose music, write lyrics. Uh, play a little bit of piano, even though I haven't been able to do that for a while. I want to get back to that as soon as possible. And Varg is uh, also teaching me a lot of different instruments. So I'm gonna, folk instruments. yeah, folk instruments. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be uh, focusing on the lyre and uh, the lure. The lure. Yes. I don't know what that is in English, but it's like <laughs> a long. It's like an <laughs> old-fashioned trumpet. Yeah. Old oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so um, now we're working on our upcoming album and basically writing everything from scratch now working together. We are so lucky that we have our uh, studio at home because we have a big place and uh, yeah. we have a whole living room basically with uh, folk instruments, guitars, drum kits, everything. Wow. So we're doing everything from home. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's very exciting, kid. Um, so I didn't realize at first that Varg uh, joined Voluspa later on. Uh, so that's interesting to know. And I was curious if you could 
give uh, everyone who's watching here the, the reason or the inspiration behind forming Polusco. So maybe Sol, since this is kind of something that you started, you could um, give us the, the inspiration behind forming this, this band. Yeah, sure. Um, I don't know, I've just always been very interested in our cultural heritage uh, ever since I was a kid. And I think I formed the band when I was about 18 years ago. Um, wow. I'm an old lady now, so <laughs> <laughs> that's a while ago. Not 18 years ago, but when you were 18 years. When I was 18 <laughs> years old. Yeah. Wow. Did I say something weird? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's fine. Okay. Um, the inspiration is just my interest in the Viking Age and our cultural heritage. And I started the band when I was about 18 years old. Uh, so it's been quite a few years where it was just a studio project and I wasn't getting anywhere with it because I hadn't met the right musicians. Um, but when I met Tvark, uh, everything kind of clicked. So we started playing live and fo focusing onwards. Um, so of course, everything Viking related, all the sagas, the Eddas, um, the old Norse religion is a huge inspiration behind the project. Sure. Yeah. Um, and my personal spiritual beliefs uh, is a big inspiration or a source of musical development. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So you so, get to you get to express all that through through the musical arts, right? Yeah, and I think that's the in your culture. That's 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 amazing. Mm, that's um, the form of expression for for that kind, that that side of me, I guess. Yeah, I love it. So I, you know, been listening to your your to Galuspa specifically for uh, a little while, maybe the last couple of years, not too very long. I've just heard some songs here and there. Okay, um, cool. But I really, really like the um, the Fimbo Winter, uh, the song in the music video that I think you released was it last maybe I think last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Um, so can you give some details behind the production of this song, um, which in would include where, if you could tell, like where the music video was filmed, um, and then also tell us the you know the audience watching kind of what that song is about. I'm I think I'm familiar with it, but maybe for those who are perhaps new to the Norse religion, uh, Norse heathenry, whatever, that aren't sure what this means. Could you maybe just give us some background as to what Fimbo Winter is? And then again, the details of uh, like where you filmed it and what all went into the production of, of shooting that, that video. I'm sure. Well, Fimbo Winter is about the time before uh, the big change and uh, before uh, Ragnarok. So uh, it says something about uh, uh, a struggle um, both uh, now metaphorically for uh, the struggle you are through uh, within yourself before things really start to change. Uh, that's how I see it anyway. And um, the song was, I, I actually I wrote that song uh, an early morning after a practice we had with the band uh, and, and I was very much in love with Sul <laughs> at that time and we didn't really had talked about uh, our love uh, no. yet so it, it was i had i had the, it almost went a little dark so uh i just put a, a, took up the guitar and uh, wrote the riff and uh, it went on from there so that was my first uh, composition for Volusbo actually Mm -hmm. Oh wow! And Fimbulvinter is also they they claim at least to have found some archaeological evidence for the whole incident because it's about a long winter. Uh, several summers go by without any warmth, really. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, it was a huge environmental change. Volcan many volcano, volcano interruptions. Yeah. Oh wow! So like a literal yeah long it, winter. It really happened. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Um... And we filmed, we, we, we uh, scouted out some locations nearby where we live, and we also used the uh, Hun Steinring Felt uh, to do the music video because. Yeah, it is a pre Christian Iron Age site nearby where we live. Norway, right? Yeah, yeah Norway. 
and uh, yeah, we, we, we used uh, those places because it's, uh, it symbolizes a lot of things and, uh, and it gives the right energy, put the right energy to the... Very mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. So we kind uh, of, did, we did everything ourselves. We, we also, <laughs> one of the, one of the um, what do you say, the movie sets, if I can say it, uh, put it that way, was inside a tree. And that tree was used to at least the folklore says so that uh, it was used to burn a witch inside that tree. So it's still Whoa. it's still uh, black inside the tree from the fire. Uh, in in the 1600s, uh, this happened, mm. and that's a local history from here. <laughs> so wow. we, we we chose to film uh, some of the music video inside the tree because yeah we, we view ourselves a little bit as. Uh, modern witches. Mm -hmm. yeah, witches are back. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of thought went into went went into this. You didn't just decide to write a song and then oh we're going to put a video out. You really seem to have put a lot of care and, and thought into everything about it. Not just the lyrics, not just the the song, but also the scenery. What people yeah. would see to kind of put that into a uh, you know give 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 life if you will to the yeah. song. So it was. Yeah. We try to tell a story with the things we do, and that's important to us. Mm. I I agree, and I think that for folks nowadays that are looking to, uh, you know, learn more about uh, this, this cultural faith, uh, this this path, the, the the concept of storytelling, you know, yeah. that that's so very important. I think, and I think it's maybe lost or forgotten nowadays. And I feel like what you're what you're doing with Bovispa really helps to revive. And, and, and bring that importance back to folks. You know, tell new stories, you know, develop traditions now for people to sing later on. You Thank know? you. Thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> I love it. So this next question is kind of focused for, for Varg and you sort of answered it a little bit in the beginning of the, of the interview, but for how many years have you been a musician and how many instruments right now can you play? Well, I started, I started with, uh, with piano actually when I was about 12. 11, 12, and then moved on to guitar. So uh, I've been doing music since I was a very young boy. And um, I, I play a lot of instruments, but I, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm like a master on everyone, mm. but how many did I You're count? You're pretty good though. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, I do some, I do the toggle harp uh, and the, the, the lyres, uh, guitars, uh, bass, drums. Uh, and some singing. What more do I do? Flutes. Flutes. Mm -hmm. Horns. Did I mention that? No. Goat horns. Goat horns. So yeah. then there's eight only there, and a little bit of synthesizers. Yeah, I, I'm I'm like a potato. You can use me to everything. <laughs> <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna remember that. I like that one. Like a potato. Yeah. About everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was going to be one of the a follow up question because I follow your uh, social media a bit and I notice you post a lot with um, lately, recently, um, where you're making horns, you're making yeah. those, those instruments. So I was curious, you know, what 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 was your inspiration to want to venture into actually making your own instruments instead of just trying to maybe find a supplier and buy it already made? Well, because of because of uh, the the way you dive into the sound, because the the sound is uh, like yeah, you're putting sound into feelings, and and other way around. So you dive into how you make something sound, and then you are able to. <laughs> Sorry, there's, <laughs> there's a cat, a cat there. on the table. That's <laughs> no, okay. It's just Raya saying hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. This is Ben. <laughs> Great. Yeah, but it, it's about diving into the to the sounds and uh, and learning to also un understand how uh, these sounds develop through the instruments and not only to play them. That's the uh, main inspiration. Yeah, and I feel like instruments. I don't personally play, but I know a lot of musicians, and I feel that uh, an instrument or instruments can be an extension of a person and can express. Yeah. Nothing. yeah. So I think it's I think it's great, and I love watching what you do and, and seeing the progression of, of how you, you know, make these these instruments and tools for your craft. It's really awesome. Thank you. Uh, next question is going to be for for Soul. Um, when I first, uh, I didn't even realize that you were you. Um, 
and you have a pretty you had something come across a, a tv station i don't know if it was a, a norwegian tv but barcroft tv talking about yep. the, your clothes and, and, and that you make your own clothes and then come to find out later on that this is Maluspa and kind of put all the things together and i was like wow you know it's the viking queen you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's on tv or on or on the internet <laughs> so my question was, I understand you you handcraft a lot of, or all maybe of your own uh, Viking Age style clothing. So I was curious to, um, which are amazing by the way, but I was curious to know what has been the most challenging piece of clothing that you've made and why was it such a challenge to, to work on? That's, that's a really good question. Um, for me, it's, you know, Viking clothing, it's, it's not that difficult to make because uh, it's a lot of triangles and squares that you just put together. Linear. But the main challenging part of it is finding, or at least making, for me, making my own patterns, because I use my own patterns, just finding the right fit and just being very, uh, being like a perfectionist when it comes to the seams. Yeah, being precise yeah. with the yeah. work. Uh, not just rushing away because every time I do that I poke myself with with needles and mm. then I get angry <laughs> so I think, think the most challenging thing is just staying calm not letting my temper run away with me <laughs> and just focusing on the task <laughs> and, and before um, I, I prefer to sew my clothes by hand um, but sometimes I use a machine as well, just for the inner seams that no one really cares about anyways. Um, and earlier on I had a really shitty machine. It was really, really bad. And I got so angry. <laughs> I think you remember some of those incidents. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> it was like fire <laughs> all around me. <laughs> and and uh, recently he and I, he, he, well, he bought a present for me and it was a new sewing machine so now it's it's much easier to just create where, whatever i want now that i have the right tools for it so it's it's not that difficult it's just finding um i keep developing the style every now and then just readjusting the the patterns uh, so i am a perfectionist is that a word yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely and i can okay. <laughs> I think I think you know everybody who has a craft or, or an art style that they want to express, whether it's music or you know clothing creations or I make you know I do wood burning, uh, so I, I'll burn you know like rune sets or or something. Other people carve, you know. I think the the effort to to, to focus on being the best that you can be and wanting it to be perfect, it's a reflection of who we are as individuals and as people, right? Mm -hmm. We it's don't a part of human nature as well, I think. Yes, yes. yes. Well, you don't want to be less than something, right? You don't. You want to be the best that you can possibly be. And, and for us, I think, at least for me as a heathen, it, it, it gives honor to our ancestors that everything that they did to get us to where we are here, we are honoring them through what we do now and, and remembering their struggles and remembering their greatness through yes. the crafts that we uh, put out. So. Yeah, definitely. And that's kind of the fun in making Viking clothing because we know so very little. There's not been many discoveries of clothing, so a lot of it is up to the imagination, really. Mm. And this is the perfectionist in me, is the reason why I've been putting, uh, opening my web shop on hold for such a long time. I just want to make sure that everything, every little detail is just the way I want it before right. I release the first collection. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I'm working on. <laughs> so have you made anything for Varg? Yeah. This, actually. This, this, yeah. It's one she of made the pieces. This for me. Yeah. It and, looks great. Uh, yeah, thank you. And I'm, I'm working on more pieces. Um, so, like we said earlier, we haven't been together for that long. And that's one of the things that Barcroft TV kind of missed, I think. Because it seemed like we had been together for 10 years, but we've <laughs> only known each other for a little over one year now. So. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, you get you. I think you two, um, you 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 project this sort of uh, old energy, and I don't mean that to mean like you're old. I mean that it, it feels like to us seeing your interactions, it's like you've been together for so very long, and that you have that connection. So it, it, it it's perceived that you maybe are have been together as a couple longer than you have in reality. 
Well, thank you. Thank we, you. we appreciate it. We, we do consider ourselves to be old souls. So, and we personally believe that we have met each other before. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's a neat, that's a neat way of viewing it. So we're looking forward to seeing more of your stuff too, Soul, um, with your clothing and whatnot. So we'll, we'll definitely be anxiously keeping an eye out for <laughs> things that come out. Uh, so I did want to talk a bit about the music aspect of things, you know, that you together write and perform or that you may write and perform solo or individually, um, maybe outside of Aluspa. What mm -hmm. do you hope that people kind of get out of it or receive from listening uh, to your music? Right, because the songs, as we talked about earlier, are largely themed around the cultural heritage, Norse mythology, even, you know. So it's like you're telling stories, as we mentioned earlier. Um, so if you, if you want to go into as much detail besides that, what, what do you want people to get out of your music? Well, for me, it's, it's a universal language. So for me, it's, uh, I, I, I would feel glad if the individual who are listening to my music uh, feels a personal space within the music so um, be able to you know find something for yourself in the music because uh, we don't preach anything with the things we do we're just uh, giving uh, the listener um, a, a platform or somewhere to go uh, to to find themselves and find some peace, maybe learn something from themselves, mm. something like that. Mm, for me, it's almost the same. I mean, I just want people to feel connected. Uh, I want to connect with the audience. That's why I personally love playing live the most. I mean, studio work is fun, but playing yeah. live is better because then you get the instant response mm. and you, you, you feel the connection and the vibe. Mm. Uh, yeah. And I want people to remember um, the old sagas, I want to put them in a new light just to bring the tradition on. Mm. Um, so it's mostly that. Um, almost all our lyrics are in Norwegian, um, but... That really doesn't matter because I, th I think that the energy is there even though people don't really understand what we are saying. Mm. <laughs> so I can I can weigh in on that if you like because I don't speak Norwegian. Matter of fact, I don't I don't speak a second language. So this is impressive to me to be able to speak with you too who you know English is not your native language and we're doing a wonderful job of communicating. So <laughs> that's up to you. You're doing a wonderful job by the way. I'm just thinking of if, if the tables were turned and I had, you know, given the chance to speak Norwegian it would be you know but yeah, um, but the music <laughs> itself right everything still just it, it resonates with me and i want to learn i want to actually see what it is like how the language translates to me in english and what i can pick up from it so it inspires me to want to learn more seek more knowledge you know um, but the, the, the most important knowledge is really found within yourself so you, you, we, as i said we don't preach anything you because these things are within because we yeah. are a part of nature mm -hmm. The things will always be within. As you grow older, uh, things come naturally to you, and by just by living and searching, most of this knowledge is inside you, mm. wherever you are. Mm. That's that's really great advice. I we like just, that. Uh, we just want to stir something uh, within people. Just <laughs> in, well, I don't know, doing right that. Where, but in, invoke something. I don't know. Yep. That's a good way to say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I did. I, I I did want to ask though, real quick, before we uh, tie the interview off, like, yeah, sure. uh, with with respects to the performing live, right? Like, if I were to think about a highlight of a career for a band, or if, it, if I was the one performing the type of music, it would be to me like the Midgard's Bloat uh, event in Norway that you uh, performed in last year. What was that like? It was it was really a dream come true because um, I've attended Mythkash Blut several years before and I've always dreamed of just <laughs> ever since I went there the first time I thought I want to be on that stage that's one of my goals in life is to be on that stage and when uh, Mythkash Blut asked us to perform there uh, they were originally uh, putting us in the Gilde Hall and we were prepared for that uh, we had practiced for a while and it was 
it was gonna be an acoustic set, so we thought that the Yilde Hall is a perfect setting for that. Uh, it's gonna be intimate and just us, you know. Uh, but two hours before we're going to play, they call us and ask us if we can go up on the main stage. And that was kind of angsty. <laughs> yeah, because we were, all, as I said, we were only me on the guitar and a bass player and the two vocalists. So we were very naked uh, on stage. We felt very naked. But and and uh, the audience really didn't expect us to be there either. So when we came up on the stage, we I, we could see that the audience was like. Uh, what is going on? You know, you know, <laughs> yeah. What's going on up there? What's going on there? <laughs> Who are those guys? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, we nailed it. You know, we, we did a good show and uh, the audience was very happy. We were very happy and the sun was shining. And it, was, it was just uh, it was It was fantastic. And there were even ravens flying in there. <laughs> ah, that's cool. <laughs> at, a, at a perfect timing too, because yeah. we have a, a song called Valfar, and it's about Odin. Mm -hmm. And every time we had two concerts at Pinterest, and every time we played that song, there were two ravens in the sky. Ah. <laughs> see, that's really cool, you know. Yeah, I could see. I, it. I like. The audience it. couldn't see it. <laughs> yep. Yep. The messengers carried it back, you know. So. <laughs> well, but I am. I. Thank you so much for answering that. I think that was a really, really awesome. I watched the video on YouTube uh, of the performance and I wish that I could be there. I've, I've, I actually know or, or knew a band um, who used to play, a, a, they were a folk band, but they kind of incorporated a, a heavy metal uh, style to it. And they were Mongolian folk, oh, not, yeah. you know, so, and they played Midgard folk uh, a couple years ago and, and their experience was, you know, out of this world they said it was amazing and getting to see how like the opening rituals and all this kind of stuff that just, the, the the embracing of the culture is what really struck out to me mm -hmm. stood out to me as, as being like they really embrace it and it's it's for everybody it's so inclusive yeah i love that we love it too uh, it has a certain kind of energy you mm. have to come over once and experience it <laughs> oh definitely i i would i would definitely love to do that and it's and it's on my as we call it, our bucket list you know it's yeah. a thing that i definitely want to do one day i'm sure um, you so with with uh wrapping it up right the the interview today with you folks and again thank you so much for taking the time to, to do it we're calling it our heathen parts and i think the the you know the nature of this interview and, and the way we talk about things and, and what you have shared with all of us has really really captured that i think it was a great title for that and the name of the, the of the interview called our heathen hearts for me it was a, an homage or an honor to your song called heathen heart now i love it I, I can't tell you how many times I've listened to it because I've lost lost count. <laughs> but the one thing the one thing that I have noticed is that, to my knowledge, and again with with all the songs that you have out online that I've listened to, um, it's the only song that I've heard uh, that is sung entirely in English. Most like you said before, most of your songs are all in Norwegian. So for non-native speakers, people who don't understand Norwegian, but kind of is left to understanding the, the, the feeling of the music or getting the feeling of the music. So I was curious, was there something specific that, uh, you know, led you to write that song and, and perform it in English rather than in Norwegian? Um, Hidden Heart, actually, that song um, I wrote in my sleep. So the melody was just something that I dreamt and I woke up like instantly and I knew that, oh, I have to record this. Um, and when I started putting words into it, it just didn't feel right to do it in Norwegian. And also I wanted the listeners, if there were any uh, out there in the rest of the world, not just Norway, to know kind of what the music is about. And mm -hmm. for me, Vårdespå is much about finding finding your roots, uh, connecting with the ancestors, connecting with the old history. And uh, I think the, the lyrics to Heathen Heart kind of express a lot of what we want to express, express with our music. <laughs> so I don't know, uh, it just felt natural to do it in English.
and wow. we might do more songs in English. I, I really don't know, but... It, it's about if, it, if the lyrics will fit the song or not. So if, if uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's easier to write in English because it, it, it's more simplistic, really. It, it feels more simple to write in English sometimes. Yeah, there's a lot of beautiful words in English that sounds good when you sing them. <laughs> yeah, but it's all about what, what fits the song, mm. basically. We're also planning to do some songs in Old Norse as well. Oh man, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 got me there, boy, because um, I love the Old Norse language and, I, and uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to learn some of it. Mm. The, uh, the pronunciation is what gets me because what, what I hear a lot of times is, well, you should really learn Icelandic first because oh, it's, no. the closest, <laughs> it's the closest to the Old Norse language. But then I hear some scholarly types and some of the academic people yeah. who are, are linguists that say, well, there's a different pronunciation to the medieval pronunciation of things versus the modern Icelandic version. And That's when I hear the different uh, Scandinavian languages, whether it be Norwegian or Icelandic or Swedish or, or Danish or whatever, I, I, I pick up different things and I see that there's so many different similarities to Old Norse, but I love old, I love it. It's, I would be, there are some other bands who I listen to that, that you know, perform and sing in, in Old Norse and it's, it would be amazing to see Boroska come out with material that... In, in that okay, movie. good. I love Old Norse too. I'm, I'm really lucky to have a, a friend that's... Um, He's a linguist and he, he works at the university. He's a soon to be professor, I think, in mm -hmm. Old Norse. So I, I can, the, the master himself can teach me how to pronounce yeah. it the way it should awesome. be. You have, a, you have a great source there. So thank you so much for actually going into the details about Kingdom Heart because I had no idea and I don't think anybody else would have really known. You say you, you, the song came to you in your sleep. Yes. It has phenomenal. <laughs> uh, there, there's so much that we can uh, get spoken to us or that can come to us. I have had lucid experiences in my life uh, from sleep where I've been woken up out of sleep and, and have been given knowledge or information or, or learned things while being in that state. So I don't think that that is uh, uncommon at all. And I don't think that, that people should feel strange about when things like that happen. You know, it's you can you can get so much from your subconscious when you're mm -hmm. not awake and alert that takes on something of its own that becomes something so great. And this is a perfect example, right? That song, I love it. Yes, as we talked about earlier, that knowledge is within you. So yeah. sometimes you, you nature chooses to speak through you and within you. So it sums it up quite well. It does. It does. Yeah, there's definitely levels of consciousness that you can learn to connect with better. And sometimes art by accident happens. But <laughs> yeah, I love it. Exactly. Yeah. Perfect. Well, that, that wraps up the, the actual questions for me. But um, any time that I get a chance to speak with folks such as yourself that are craft, you know, that, that, that have some sort of craft that they're, uh, that they're working in art wise, I'd like to, as I say, roll out the red carpet for my guests. So anywhere that anyone can find you online, your projects, what it is that you are interested in doing, now is your time to sort of let everybody know where they can find you. Okay, um, so I'm, my Instagram is at the Viking Queen. Um, yeah, I chose that name. <laughs> That's me. And I have a web page called thevikingqueen.com also, we have our Facebook pages, mm -hmm. and I also have my Instagram. I uh, have the Fedrespor Instagram, but I you mostly I use my personal Instagram, which is Varg Sosta, S A A S T A D. D. <laughs> Two A's. <laughs> Two A's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we have uh, our band page on Instagram. It's called at. Band. So, so we are we are like uh, we are on a musical journey, and uh, you can follow our journey through our social media. And uh, we really appreciate our followers and uh, the attention we get uh, that we get to to share our knowledge uh, journey. Yeah, what we do with all of you, yeah. we really enjoy. Awesome. It. 
<laughs> we, enjoy, we enjoy being a part of the journey. Um, you're also, you also have a YouTube channel, I believe, right? It's not up and running. Well, well, well we, have, the band. we have we have the band the YouTube page. Yeah, we yeah. have a band YouTube page. Um, what is it called? Is it Wall Spot? Yeah, Wall Spot Band. Wall Spot Band. Yeah. yeah, I think so. So if you search for Wall Spot, you will find it on on YouTube. Great. That. Yeah. Also, oh, uh, we'll 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 make sure. So everyone that's watching, you know, head down into the description because everything for ways that you can follow your Varg and Soul collectively or individually as well as their, their band and their projects all of that is going to be linked down in the description so if you're not already following them on their various social media platforms head down into the description area and you will find all those links all that stuff will be posted down there uh, for the viewers and stuff to find so um thank you yeah and thank you again for for tuning in with us today and listening to this and watching this don't forget to uh, like, comment, share, and subscribe to Midgard Musings, as well as to all of uh, Oregon Soul's uh, social media sites. Again, head down to the description to check all that out. Um, but is there anything else that you or uh, either one of you wanted to, to say before we wrap this up? Uh, yes, we are working parallel with two different albums. One, Feathers Put album, which more... Uh, that album is more... Uh, what can I say? Uh, it, it's it, it's more it's a little darker, mm. a little more heavier. Yeah. And uh, and of course the new Ragnarok album for Wallace Boss. We are we are really uh, putting a lot of work into into our uh, project these days, and we have day jobs uh, mm. besides. So we can only put so and so much into the music project but we of course want to deliver our very best yeah it's better to take time and just do it properly yeah even yeah. though it may take some time <laughs> no I, I definitely agree I yeah we just want to say thank you for for taking your time to talk to us yeah uh, really appreciate it and appreciate your love for the music um, and also thank you to everybody out there who listens to our music Truly yeah. Thank you so much for having us. <laughs> all right, and thank you again for being such generous guests. So we will see you all soon. Hail, and see you all in the next video. <laughs>